Okay. My presentation is about HTML bars and, and uh, why you should give a crap about it. Uh, basically, the core team are focusing on HTML bars right now. So their fo main focus is trying to get this out. And after that, they're going to work on the other things that are not specified yet. Call the animation, not sure. But right now, this is our focus, which will touch animation a little bit in terms of performance. So what is it? Lots of text. Basically, HTML bar is a new templating uh, library, which was built on handlebars. And it's, um, it's kind of a blanket. These guys, they messed up, to be honest, in uh, creating uh, the, well, basically in handlebars, if you can say that on YouTube. <laughs> so basically, they're rewriting the view layer. And uh, HTML bars is basically a code name of doing that. Which means that we are going to be faster, so every Ember application using HTML bars is going to perform a little bit faster and also have less recursions. So the main difference is that it actually understands your markup. So when you put it inside of a link as an attribute or outside of a HTML tag, it would actually know where it is and define it that way. <coughs> but I cherry picked six benefits that would actually uh, make Ember a whole lot better. One. Clear syntax. <laughs> so basically, this is the way we're doing it right now, uh, which, we, <laughs> which was tough for me to learn at first. Thank you, Code School. So bind attributes. We actually have to say bind attribute, class, full class, and then full text. And this is after. Basically, <coughs> like any other template language, it actually works. I don't know who's been using Twig or Velocity or Groovy. Nobody using any templating language at the moment. Well, basically, they work like this already. So this is a must-have parameter to, well, be more future-proof. What's the second uh, biggest game? <coughs> Performance. So they're saying right now that it's going to be 30% faster, and especially with the cloning method. What do I mean by that? So hopefully the internet works. So I looked up uh, the performance, because I was kind of interested in what which MVC framework was better. Was it Backbone? Was it Angular? Was it Ember? So I just looked around and basically just take this with a grain of salt because it's uh, an animation to see which one actually performs better, but there are tons of ways of approaching this. This is what Backbone is doing basically for the animation. And this is Ember using handlebars. <laughs> And as you can see, the animation suffers a little bit. <coughs> so let's see the improvement. <coughs> Close this one, so the test will be the same. Okay, so now we're gonna, I don't know if you guys remember, but this is uh, animating it with backbone. It works. <laughs> Good job. Yeah, that's right. Don't sell it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Ember with HTML bars. Please, internet. Let me try reloading. Well, I guess you have to take my word for it. <laughs> it's really fast. You barely see it. It's like a blur. <laughs> well, basically, it animates a little bit slower than native. And um, it doesn't have the cloning issues it had before. Okay, so basically, this is how they solved it. They're using a native JavaScript uh, method, which is fragment clone node, instead of actually creating. So let's say you have a, a list world data, which we all have. And uh, basically the way Amber goes about it would actually be creating these lists every time and then injecting values inside of it. Right now it's cloning it. So that's why the performance is a lot better using HTML bars instead of Ember bars. And this technique, I mean, I will have the presentation that uh, they gave. This technique they code name it hydration, which is pretty, pretty cool. 
And benefit number three, no more script tags. And bye-bye metaphors. Metamorph, sorry. <laughs> so basically, this is the before. Can you guys actually see it from there? Because uh, the other next slide. So this is before. You see actually all the script tags are removed in HTML bars. Mm -hmm. Three output is a hell of a lot cleaner. Do you know how they accomplished that? Um, yes, I do know. And it's all in the presentation. And it goes into a lot of details to actually uh, explain how they did it. And I kind of advise you to go and watch the presentation. It's about half an hour long. Uh, when they inject the uh, HTML, yes. they inject the elements and they have the reference for the binding. Yes. So that's yeah. fine. Yes, exactly. Well, thank you. Well, this is something as well. There was This was also an issue. Um, basically, the binding order. They also go into a lot of details. So probably saw that presentation yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah. <clears throat> well, uh, basically, right now, this would actually send a request. So if photo is a falsy, it would actually still send an image some URL, URL request to the server. Because you, there's no binding order, there's no hierarchy. You cannot say if photo, if only if it's false, do not send uh, or kill the whole uh, tree, basically. And right now with HTML bars, you can do that. You can actually kill child out. So you can actually define your, uh, your order and your hierarchy and your bindings. Benefit number five, I don't like this one, but a lot of people do, is you can have logic in your template, so you can share uh, comparisons and stuff like that. But I personally like keeping my uh, client side uh, kind of logic free, but depends how you flow. So to you. And number six, bye bye jQuery. <laughs> this is uh, really cool because uh, it's less dependency, but a lot of people still want to use jQuery. I mean, it's optional. Now. When can we use it? Well, you can use it today. You can make a demo with it today. But I would advise against it. I would say wait till it's bundled with the starter kit. But some people are using it already. They're doing making demos. They're showing it off. And uh, even the code that you didn't see that was still loading when it backbone was uh, versus Ember using the HTML bars was also them using it. So uh, feel free to use it, basically. And uh, thank you. And that was it. That was a really short uh, discussion. I will put up these links later so you can uh, read up more about it. And uh, it's a brief introduction of how HTML bars and the, the, ben the most majority benefits that it, it comes along with it. And uh, if you really want to delve into deeper, um, you can go to the recursion reduction, re-render, how they handle the re-render, and the details for server side and also using Node.js for uh, SEO purposes. And <laughs> something they call expressions. <laughs> yes, it's actually called like that. So these are beyond the basics. So I will put these links up on the Meetup site. And uh, they will discuss more about it. If I discuss about it, it will take more than two hours. <laughs> OK, Thanks. thank you. Uh, questions? Um, yeah, I'm curious. Sort of at what stage is uh, the people think it's going to land? Um, they're saying the next version. Like 1.6? Yes. No, I would say 1.7 or maybe 1.8. <laughs> oh, okay. But so in a few months, basically. Yeah. 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 And how does that, you know, how that impacts um, our application code? Do we have to change? Um, yes, everything? you do have to migrate a couple of things. I mean, you do have to sit in your old database and actually say, um, well, you actually have to migrate. <laughs> So some things you're actually calling with data attribute or mm -hmm. bind attribute, these things you probably have to remove because they're no, no, no longer valid if you're using a template language. I mean, some people are still using a backend template language with Amber application as well. So oh, okay, not really yeah. using Amber bars. Yeah, so besides the bind attribute, um, um, it should work in place sort of thing. Um, yeah, I'm guessing so. But it's not my place to say. <laughs> I hope so. Have you, do you have much experience doing development on it? Yeah, on Ember, yes, yes, but not the HTML bars. Yeah, HTML bars. Uh, no, this is something that's completely new. Basically, I've been reading upon it and all the, the new uh, things that are coming out for it. Basically, why people are excited about it and why they should be excited about it. 
But in terms of uh, actually experiencing it, I'd rather not say because it's not out yet. Because yeah. everything I see now may not be relevant. Yeah, it could change. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> All I can promise you is going to be faster, and when it's out, please use it. In your note uh, comment, you you imply that you don't need an extra library to render the HTML. Um, you, no, the note comment was basically you can use Node.js to couple with your Ember.js, and uh, this to make your your application SEO friendly. So yeah, but you don't need Phantom US or something. Um, uh, not, that I, not that I'm aware. Okay. Stick, uh, you probably still render your page in Phantom JS or maybe Selenium, but you still need a Node.js based browser implementation to yes. handle the page rendering. Exactly. You can do it direct, probably, with HTML1. Uh, yeah, it becomes a lot easier. The, I think there are a couple of solutions out right now, but they don't really work that uh, well or consistently. So that will probably change. <coughs> so this is something we should have experimented. These are cutting edge technologies. I would say let's get, get out there and start making uh, some demos. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you guys.